Hello friends, and today it is time for another video of me reacting to some recent K-pop releases. It is actually January 15th as I'm starting this video, which means it is my birthday. And we had two amazing releases that came out today. We have another amazing release that comes out tomorrow that I will just add onto this video. And then the number one thing that I'm most craving to finally react to is Untouchable by Itzy, which came out last week. Full transparency, I went to a K-pop party this weekend and they played Untouchable, but you cannot really like, you know, get the full idea of the song and stuff from hearing it at a club. <laughs> and obviously I have heard the chorus before. So, you know, I, I kind of know the basic vibe and I am pretty sure I will be absolutely obsessed with it. I think it is going to be my, well, I loved Cake, but I still think it could be one of my favorite title tracks of Itzy in a while. So I, I'm just very much looking forward to it. I'm very much looking forward to the music video as well. And just like seeing the full choreography and everything like, you know, there's more to react to than just the song in and of itself. But again, I've heard it once in a club, so it's not, it's not you know, that intense. I just love this instrument, instrumental. Oh, the styling. <gasps> they look incredible. Like, it's so good. It's so catchy. And the choreography really, really works with it. Ooh, I love that. I also feel like this like pinkish hair is the first time I've actually liked Virgin with long hair. <laughs> Bridge, let's go. No, listen, with... It was a short bridge. But these days, we get so little bridges, such short songs. And this song actually, it has a bridge. It is a little bit longer than three minutes and 30 seconds. <gasps> oh my God. I was like, how are they going to get into the cr the crown pose? And that one was smooth. Like, I'm, I have chills. Okay, listen. I said this in the video where I reacted to Born To Be as well. Like, I fucking... I just love Itzy. Have I loved every single thing that they have put out in the last, like, two years? No. Am I still here excited for each and every release that they put out? Yes. And I will continue to be sad when they release stuff and like this entire album and like the pre-release pre track but also this title track proves that they are absolutely still delivering it's just that people have given up on them and like it's your loss like I don't know what to say this is one of their best title tracks mm. Nothing controversial about that for me personally, but anyways, I have actually listened, like I genuinely put the entire album on my playlist and just deleted Untouchable. <laughs> so I have actually listened to the album a couple, couple of times as well. I really, really love all the solo tracks and I feel like, I mean, I feel like I have so much to say. Like I could probably make an entire video just on this release. I really love how they show like, so much in each of the solos like i feel like especially if you look at ryojin's solo he, she shows stuff that she doesn't usually get to show in itzy's songs 
but I also think that from the solo tracks, while I love them, I have nothing to like criticize about the solo tracks in and of itself. To me, it also very much showcased why they work as a group. And I also think that like, you know, they are obviously like so incredible, but I also think that like there are definitely parts where I am missing Leah's voice, right? And like, I wish her all the best. And I just hope that she takes however much time that she needs. I just want her to be healthy, to feel good, right? But I do think there are parts where, like, the tone of her voice is missing. Obviously, like, this group has amazing vocalists. It's not about, like, the range or anything. It is about, I feel like, the tone. Like, she adds a certain tone to the group that, to me personally, is missing from the album. Does not mean it's a bad album, does not mean anything about the other members, but just, like, to me, it only really you know, points out how strong ITZY is as a group. Okay, let's continue with NMIX. And I actually want to uh, react to both Dash, but also the performance video of Run For Roses, I think. Yes, Run For Roses it is. I want to react to that too. The way that I feel co about NMIX is very similar to the way that I feel about ITZY in comparison to like the general K-pop listener because I think NMIX are fucking amazing. I don't know why people shit on them so much. I think they have put up some like new and innovative stuff and I think it's incredible. I feel like these days, constantly within like K-pop, we want to talk about people just copying other groups and rehashing concepts. And in my personal opinion, what NMIX have done has been really unique stuff. And like, I don't really understand why we're hating on them for that, you know? So I'm fucking excited. I have no idea about this one. This came out like four hours ago, so I have not been exposed to any TikTok challenges. I did not watch any of the teasers, so I don't know what to expect. And like, I liked all the releases, but there's ones that I loved more than others. And I want to love this one so bad. Like, I want to be obsessed with this one because that is the kind of energy that I want to put into NMAX, you know? So, okay, let's watch the Dash, Dash music video. Okay, we got a cool vibe going on. <gasps> Wait, I love the hair on her. Love a lip ring always. Queen. I genuinely think they're one of the strongest groups vocally. I don't know, I have like... I just have like a lot of love for them. There's like throwback... Okay, that was not long enough. I need more. That was too short. That was too... Like, I literally got emotional. Okay, I just tried to find it in the... I don't... What do we call it? Oh, oh, is, I don't know what we call their debut song. <laughs> like, how do we actually say the title? But I feel like this the one point in the music video, it very much looked like the street in front of the donut shop. And I feel like when I saw the peacock, I kind of had a feeling they had a peacock in one of their earlier music videos, but 
maybe I'm mixing it up. I don't know. But for some reason, just seeing that shot, I was like, oh, there's clear they're clearly like doing like a throwback. So I was already kind of just like, oh my god. And like in that exact moment, I wanted to say, oh, I have like a lot of love for them. And then we got fucking and mix change up. And then we fully went into like a throwback, right? With like the floating aisles. And obviously the whale is like a huge theme for them anyway. But just like having that, like, it, mm, I don't know. For me, I feel like I could absolutely interpret into this too much. But I feel like they were very clearly like sending a message with this. And like even with like the hey you bastards, I'm still here. I don't know. I'm just getting like a certain kind of vibe. And honestly, we absolutely love to see it. And I don't know. I just, I feel like I, I want it a little bit more out of the song in general. But like, I'm just so happy we got mix pop back. Like I just, mm. I also feel like the entire concept for this comeback, like looking at Sona and then at this one, I'm like, oh, it's, it's giving dystopian and I'm absolutely here for it. I genuinely think and mix is an amazing group. And I think that they are a really, really strong group. And I think that they are a really strong group vocally. And I feel like not enough people give them credit for how strong they are vocally. And like, obviously we all know Lily is a powerhouse, but I feel like they are just, it's the same thing where I feel like as a group, their voices work so well together. And like, there's a reason they are always doing the highlight medleys as a cappella because they're fucking strong vocally and you can just tell. They also just use their voices very well in the songs, I feel like. to them forever like Get you a girl who can do it all. Like, in my opinion, they have nailed every single concept they have done so far. I feel like they, this is a little bit, it's a little bit more like mature compare it to the to well to all of their comebacks but i feel like especially like you have something like young dumb stupid which i i love young dumb young dumb stupid right but like roller coaster and stuff and i'm just like i feel like this is a little bit like more mature a little bit like darker and i think they nailed this as well i think they are so fucking cool and they genuinely like seem cool whereas i feel like sometimes other girl groups try to nail that concept and it just doesn't really work for them or for all the members i think they genuinely all nail the concept i love them i think they're incredible and incredibly underrated as well so love that okay the other release that came out today that i wanted to react to is the new release by yena we have good morning and i just saw a little teaser on instagram earlier and i immediately was like oh she is back and i think i'm going to absolutely love this release i've loved all of her releases so far she really makes music that i love and that i wish we had more of in k-pop oh it starts out even like in more intense than i thought it would like she is my k-pop punk princess Okay. She's 
she's the princess to Moonbeam's queen. You know? I love how she's just in the woods with a sword dancing while holding a microphone. Her music videos are always amazing. Like, there's something so quirky to all this, the music videos she puts out. I don't really know that much about her apart from her releases. I wonder how much creative influence she has in the music videos. I wouldn't be surprised if she's really, like, involved in the production of these, because I feel like... Or she always works with the same people, because, like... Something about her music videos, even if like this, it's like a little bit darker, it's always a very similar vibe. Um, I love this. I don't really know if it's if she has put out an entire mini album or if it's just like a single release, but if there's a mini album, I'm excited to listen to it. Same for Endmix, by the way. Like I am so pumped to listen to the entire uh, mini album. Before we move on, one thing I want to talk about is I did not even think to wait to film a reaction but I love the entire mini album that SF9 have just put out. I feel like I was just like seeing it on TikTok and be I think usually SF9 would not be a group I would react to. So I didn't even think twice about it when I started, you know, just listening to the album. I'm obsessed with it. I love the title track, Midnight Sun, one of the best B-sides. And like, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if that song actually makes it into my favorite of the entire year and like you know that was one of the first releases this year but i truly think it could stay in my favorite b-sides you know throughout the entire year but all the tracks on the album are amazing so if you haven't yet i highly recommend listening to that one there's also a debut that i want to react to i'm usually not super informed about any new groups debuting unless they're from like a big company but this one i saw on tiktok and I feel like it like I just it looked really good from the little clip that I saw. So I thought let's just react to it together. The group is Waker and their title track is Atlantis. And I really think they just debuted last week. So let's go. See, I'm immediately like in love with the instrumentals. Very, very much something that I enjoy. His voice is very unique, I feel like. I really liked his voice. I feel like it's already giving a summer song, you know? Oh, he's a rapper. Like, I don't know if it's the hair color. The one that just rapped with the honey, this one, with the honey blonde hair, just really stands out to me. But it could just be that he's the only one who has like lighter hair. No, he really stands out to me. I feel like he is probably like center or visual if they even have positions. And I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that um, the members are all, you know, compared to other groups debuting these days. Yeah, okay, so the oldest one is a 94 liner. Okay, the one that stood out to me. <laughs> The one that stood out to me. He's a 98 liner, so, you know, whatever. But, like, he's an Aquarius. <laughs> and the amount of biases I have that are Aquarius, it's genuinely, <laughs> it's not funny anymore. <laughs> so that's why I'm fucking laughing. Okay. 
We have another 98 liner. Okay, one of them is 2000s. Actually, let me check again. The one that the Aquarius is... Okay, his position is just wrapper. They do have a leader as well. The 94 liner is the leader. The one with like the long straight hair, his position just says dancer, but I feel like he had a lot of lines. We have... Okay, he's born in 2000. Vocalist and dancer. We have 2001, just says vocalist. And then the one with the blue hair is the Macne. He's also just listed as vocalist and he is 2002. So yeah, like compared to other groups, we love that age range. But it looks like they don't have like a center or visual position. But I very much felt like you know, there was the, the the one that I like that stood out to me kind of looked like a center position to me. Um, but maybe it's again, it could just be the hair, right? Um, I also just saw, which I was immediately wondering about the 94 liner because of military. <laughs> like I understand I'm just very much in my military wife era. So I feel like it's very much on my mind. Uh, but I'm reading that he has already completed his military service, which makes a lot of sense. I feel like they wouldn't really debut a 94 liner if he hadn't completed his military service yet. But I feel like... I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm definitely going to continue kind of looking out for this group. Okay, that is everything that I want to react to today. I have one more thing that I'm going to add tomorrow when I come home from work. I'm going to film a reaction to Hui's solo debut, which is wild that it took all these years for him to have an official solo debut but I am obviously so incredibly excited for that so I am you know going to just add that footage tomorrow to this I cannot wait and if there's anything else I will think about until then I'll react to that too but I think that is everything that I wanted to react to for the most part but obviously like out of all of them I'm probably the most excited for Hui because you know I love him and I just, yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay, it is actually the next day. I just got home from work and then got ready because I am about to go out for a belated birthday dinner with my parents. But of course, before I leave, I am going to react to Hui's solo debut. Now, I think it is an upbeat number, but I would not be surprised if I end up getting emotional just because... I missed him so much and I missed his voice so much. So I'm genuinely just like so excited to the point where I just think that even though it is like, you know, a happy song, I might cry. <laughs> so let's get into it. I love this hair color on him so much as well. Oh my God. His voice. Mm. What? I was going to say that I love this fit, um, but I was... There was a different surprise waiting for me. Oh my gosh. He looks so cute. This is so much fun. <laughs> 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 
way I'm, I have no words. That was so lovely. I didn't cry, yay. Um, I just, like, I mean, it really is just like upbeat, happy, I love it. It's like, it, it's just a lot of fun and still just like serving vocals. I loved all the different looks and in general just loved, you know, the music video and just how vibrant it was. I'm so excited to listen to the album, to listen to all the tracks, even though there's only four. But I just, ugh, I genuinely just missed Hui so much and I'm just so happy for him to actually have a solo debut and I just hope that, you know, I, I just wish him the most success with it. Something else that I did not mention yesterday but that I do want to react to as well as our last video of this video is Sister19 no more my boy as someone who was obsessed with sister when they were still active they were one of the first groups that i kind of like started actively listening to when i got into k-pop as someone who was still obsessed with hyolin and you know obviously like just the entire phenomenon that was sister 19 and that was my boy there's no way for me around this okay I mean, you know for a fact it's going to be iconic. Their voices just complement each other so well too. Like there's many reasons why they work as a subunit. Apart from the fact that they're incredibly hot, you know? <laughs> I need this to be played at the next K-pop party I go to, okay? Otherwise, I'll be mad. Let's go. I am too, I'm too gay for this, okay? <laughs> love, love, love. Like, it's a bop. They're both insanely hot. Love the choreography. And just, I don't know. Like, I, again, I need this to be played at the next k-pop party i go to because it's it's literally perfect for that okay like mm, mm, just i'm so happy again i think their voices complement each other incredibly well they really just work as a subunit and i don't know it just makes me very happy uh, again as someone who loved sister so uh yeah that is it for today's video of reacting to some k-pop comebacks what a wonderful, successful, beautiful video. Like, I really just loved everything that we watched and reacted to. So yeah, it just makes me very, very happy. Let me know what your thoughts are for any of these music videos and releases that I reacted to. And I will see you with another video very soon. Bye!